Hi class. I'd like to speak with you right now about mapping signals uh, from some kind of input domain to some kind of output domain. Uh, doing this kind of mapping is a core part of the kind of the bread and butter of our craft as new media artists and there's an enormous amount of opportunities for creating expressive detail and a lot of this is basically managing simple mathematics to sort of map a number that's coming in from one place that has its own internal range to a number that's going out to control something else that has its own you know, external range. So what do I mean by these ranges? Well, for example, um, a, uh, a photo cell uh, is a sensor that, pr that measures the amount of light and it produces numbers that are, let's say, between 0 and 5 volts. Maybe they're being digitized to numbers between 0 and 1024 by an Arduino or something. Um, maybe you're looking at the current time, which is producing seconds that go from 0 to 60. Uh, or milliseconds, which are uh, uh, the millis command, sort of ever-increasing numbers that you know count by 1,000 every single second, um, which quickly gets large. You know, or maybe we're looking at um, gesture from a mouse, con you know, cursor. In which case, we're looking at like numbers that go from let's say from zero to 640 across a small screen. Uh, or maybe we're looking at like a sine wave, where we have numbers that go from negative one to one um, at periodically. Okay, so that's kind of an input range. What do I mean by an output range? Well, we have like things like color channels. If you know from, from uh, specifying colors, uh, each color channel, red, green, and blue within a color, is a number that goes with 8-bit color from 0 to 255, right? So maybe we'll have 0 is, is this kind of dark, dark gray or black, and then white is this 255 there. Or maybe we're doing some kind of animation and we're moving a character across a high-definition screen. So the position of the character could go from 0 to 1920. Uh, or maybe we're controlling the volume of a sound and the numbers go from 0 to 1. So we sort of we want to basically map these input domains to these output domains, and uh, we're going to have to do some kinds of scaling and shifting. And as we will see, we're going to have to do some kinds of nonlinear shaping as well to produce the kinds of aesthetic effects that that matter to us. Okay, so let's proceed. Hot dog. Okay, the first function I'd like to talk to you about is constraint. Now, constraint constraint takes a number coming in and it clamps or limits it to a low and a high value of a range. Um, so uh, let's get an example of what I mean by this. If I run this simple program, um, I have uh, a white ellipse here, a white circle, that's being drawn uh, basically with the same mouse x, whatever my mouse x is doing. Uh, and its, it's y value is 100, uh, according to this, uh, this line here. Now suppose I want to make it so that no matter what, it cannot go to the left of a certain value, let's say 123, and it can't go, let's say, past the right uh, side of a certain value, let's say 321. Okay, so how do we, we do that? Well, let's first, let's visualize that range for ourselves so we can actually see what that looks like. So I'm just going to kind of um, put in some of this text over here and uh, plop this like this. And you'll see that I have chosen a couple variables called x low and x high. Those are my names. And I'm going to draw a thin line, and, uh, two thin lines rather, which are vertical lines that go from x low uh, at the top uh, you know, across and also x high across uh, from top to bottom. So here are those two lines. Now, I haven't done any constraining yet. I'm just kind of drawing them. That's the limit that I want my ellipse to have. So in addition to uh, the first ellipse that I'm drawing there, the one, uh, this one here, let's draw another ellipse which is constrained horizontally to be, to be within that range. Uh, remember now, the registration point of a circle is in its center. Um, okay, so how would I would I do that? Well. I would, uh, let's say, go down here, and I have some prepared some, some text, okay, and I'll put that over here, and I'm going to say the following. I'll make a new variable called mx, uh, which is a constrained version of my mouse x. I'm going to say it's the result of constraining the mouse x to the range from x low to x high. Okay. Then I'm going to basically uh, draw an ellipse this time again. This time I'll draw it at, let's say, 300 down, all right? And so if I, if I run that, now you'll see that the one at the top is pegged to my cursor, but the one to the bottom is, is limited to within that range. Okay, now that's pretty good. Now I remember I said the registration point of the circle uh, is in its center. Uh, so the center of the circle is constrained to that range. What if I want the entire circle to be constrained within that range? Well, remember that the circle has a radius um, of, uh, of uh, in this case, or a diameter, excuse me, of 50. So we would need to sort of have 25 on either side of that to make sure that it was truly constrained. Let's, uh, let's say we, we constrained it to the range uh, from x low plus 25 to x high minus 25. Now we'll really kind of peg it in there. 
And if you're really fussy like I am, you'll notice that the stroke weight is four pixels, which means that there's actually a certain extent to which the, the circle overlaps the edge here. Maybe we want to actually boost this by another two pixels up, 27 and 27, and now it'll be truly stuck within that range. Okay, there you go. So that's constraining it. Um, and constraint is super useful. Okay, awesome. The next function I want to talk to you about that's really important is called map. Map uh, takes a value coming in, which has a range, let's say, that goes from in A to in B, and it's going to produce a new value that goes from out A to out B. Um, and A and B can be high and low or low and high, it's up to you. But we basically have a value and it's sort of natural incoming input range, and uh, we have the output range that we want to map those values to. Let's see this in practice. Suppose I have this circle here, um, and the circle goes from zero to width. Uh, of our canvas. Okay. Now I've also drawn a couple pair of lines in here like we had before. Um, X low, which is at 123, and X high, which is at 321. Um, and I, so I've drawn those in, in these lines here. Now uh, I'm going to draw another ellipse, um, which is going to be the one that we're going to use the map function uh, to control. So let's, uh, let's begin with that here. And I'm just going to kind of put that over here. And I'll say, well, for now, let's just have its position be exactly equal to the mouse X. Now, what, let's say what I want is I want it so that when the top circle is over here on the left, that the bottom circle is actually over here at, 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 at uh, X low. And that when my top circle is on the right, all the way right at width, uh, that the bottom circle is at X high. Okay, so the map function is going to accomplish that for us. Um, and so here's the map function that does that. And instead of saying that mx is equal to the mouse x, I'm going to say that mx is actually equal to mapping the mouse x, whose range naturally goes from zero to width, to a new output range that goes from x low to x high. And if I run that, then we'll see that um, now, over here on the left, when my mouse is all the way left, it's va the lower one's value is at x low. And as I move slowly across, then the the uh, when my mouse is all the way right, the um, the lower one's value is at x high. Now note, there's no constraint in here yet. I can actually go past the uh, the screen here, and I can go, or I can go past the left hand side. So it's not about constraining it. It's about mapping this range from zero to width to this range from from uh, uh, x low to x high. It turns out there's actually an extra optional argument you can put into the map command. Uh, so a final argument, which is whether or not it actually is clamped. So I'm going to say true. That's my final argument there to, for that. I'm going to back this up. And now if I run that, now it's both mapped and clamped or constrained. Do you see that? So when I'm all the way right at width, uh, it is um, uh, at x high. And when I'm all the way left at 0, it's at x low and everything in between. I can be here. It's sort of you know 10, 15 percent of the way across. Here, it's 50 percent of the way through that range, and so on. So. Uh, maybe as one final demo, I think uh, we can really you know, slam home what the, the map function can do by flipping one of these ranges from low high to high low. Uh, so let's look at that. Again, we have this range from in A and in B to out A and out B, but nothing says that one of these has to be low or the other has to be high. We could flip the order of that. So here, uh, to read the map function again, we're saying that this variable mx is equal to the result of mapping mouse x, whose natural range is from zero to the width, to this number x low to x high. And this says that we're constraining it. But I could just reverse these. I could say make this one x high and this one x low. So I'm going to map it not from 123 to 321, but from 321 to 123. So let's look at that behavior now. Uh, as, I, as I start at 0, it starts at x high. And as I head towards width, suddenly it goes to x low. So now it's an inverse mapping, which is also Right, within a different range, it's sort of scaled down, and it's clamped or constrained. I'd like to show now um, a way that we can use this kind of proportional mapping, not just to control position with position, but to use posi uh, position to control something else proportionally, um, where we're mapping from uh, a range, let's say in this case from, um, from x low to x high, uh, which have values of 123 and 321. Uh, to, let's say, a color. So let's begin. Here's a, a rectangle. Um, its left-hand value is x low. Its right-hand value is x high. And I'm going to um, use the constraint function to create a line which exists within that 
uh, that range there uh, from x low to x high. So here we go. Here's a line, and it's constrained, okay, between 123 and 321. It's sort of stuck in this range. Now I want to use the map function, and I'm going to produce a new value from that range, okay, which is scaled and shifted, um, or shifted and scaled. And I'm going to produce in this case a range of a number between zero and one, okay. Now, uh, effectively, what this is doing is that it's dividing, uh, or it's subtracting 123 from this, and then di dividing by the result by whatever 321 minus 123 is. But um, that doesn't concern us because we're going to use the map function, and that map function is here. So here, I'm going to make a new value, okay, and I'm going to say this value is the result of taking my constrained x value. I'm calling it con mx. My constrained x value, whose range I know goes from x low to x high, and I'm going to produce this output value from 0 to 1. Okay, so I have a new value which is proportional to this number here, um, but is in the range from 0 to 1. And I'm going to use that to control something interesting for a really cool function called lerp color. Now what lerp color does is that it creates a blend between two colors, um, and it does so according to a number given to it between 0 and 1. And as you see again and again, these numbers between 0 and 1 are really handy for doing really crafty control of uh, physical properties of things. So I got a number between 0 and 1, it's called val, and I'm basically going to use it in this cool function called lerp color down here. So let's kind of throw this in here. Now I'm going to have two colors. Let's say color A called yellow, and color B, which is deep pink. And I'm going to set a variable, a color variable called my fill, which is the result of asking for the linearly interpolated color uh, between color A and color B where the proportion of interpolation, or the, the, the sort of the knob that's between them, is this val number. Okay, so once again, I'm basically blending between color A and color B, and if, if val is zero, I'll get pure color A. If val is one, I'll get pure color B. If val is 0 0.5, I'll get something which is an equal blend, um, and val is being controlled by the mouse. So let's set the fill to my fill and draw an ellipse down below, and now you can see when I'm all the way left, I get pure yellow, when I'm all the way right, I get hot pink or deep pink. When I'm halfway in between, I get a nice orange. Okay, And basically, in this way, I'm taking a number which is between 123 and 321, and I'm producing a number between 0 and 1, and using that to control uh, a blend between two colors, whose individual color channel properties I don't know.